In the previous clip, we finally saw the, the theorem which allows us to calculate uh, double integrals. And the way to calculate them was to uh, use iterated integrals. But the, the theorem was stated only for rectangles. Okay? And the, the generalization is going to be not just on rectangles, but on domains which are called simple domains. And that's what I want to explain now. What is a simple domain? So those are the domains for which the theorem will generalize it. We'll, we'll write the theorem for the more generalized version of the theorem in the, in the next clip. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to require some bit of discussion as well. But just the domains. I'm, just, I'm now considering everything I'm going to do is in the xy plane. No functions involved. No integrals involved. Just the domains. Okay. So a domain is simple if it's of the following form. The x's have to be strictly between two given values. So the x's are between a and b. It starts rectangle-ish, right? A rectangle, the x's are between a and b, and the y's are between c and d. Then it's a rectangle, right? Here, the x's are between a and b, a and b, but the y's are allowed to live between two functions of x. For example, let's take maybe color. So for example, let's say that this function, let's call it y1 of x. And let's say that this function here is y2 of x. And the domain here, the domain here, and I'm going to denote it like this. And I'm even going to add little arrows up here. This is just for, for expressing the idea. So the x's are strictly between a and b. So d is the set of xy's such that, the set of xy's such that, x is strictly between two constant values a and b. And for every x, y is between y1 of that specific x. So if you've taken x here, the y's are between y1 of x and y2 of x. Clear? This is called a simple domain. But there should be another kind of simple domain, right? Because remember, when we're discussing the xy plane, that's, the, that's just the domain of the function. Why should x be bounded between constants and y between functions? We could have the, the analogous one. So this one is going to be called a simple domain with respect to x. And the other kind of simple domain is going to be with respect to y, and it's going to look like this. So this is x, this is y. But now y is going to be fixed between two constant values, c and d. And for each fixed y, x is going to be between two functions of uh, y. So x1 of y and x2 of y. And now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, shade this domain, again, in a suggestive way by these arrows like this. So for every fixed y between c and d, the x's are allowed between this function x1 and this function x2. OK, so this is a simple domain. with respect to y. OK? Now, there's only one thing that's confusing here, which is called with respect to x and which is called with respect to y. And honestly, some people call it the other way around. 
So I'm not even sure if, if, if I should call this with respect to x and the other one with respect to y, but it simply doesn't matter. It's just a name. Okay? If the domain is simple, then it's of this form. Okay? So this is going to be a domain of the form all the x's and y's such that x, sorry, such that y is between two fixed values and x's are between two functions. So y is between c and d, and x is between x1 of y and x2 of y. And uh, we're going to assume, in the previous case as well, that these two functions are continuous functions. Okay, the functions that give the bounds in the, in the coordinate that, that's bounded between functions. Okay, these are going to be continuous, and likewise, in the previous board, you can add here, these two functions are continuous. Okay, so that's the notion of a simple domain, and the theorem on iterated integration is going to extend to domains of this form. Clearly, not every domain is simple. Clearly not every domain that's simple with respect to x is simple with respect to y and vice versa, okay? But we are going to be able to handle some domains which are not simple, providing we can break them up into simple domains. So for example, if you look at a domain, let's say like this, something like this, suppose this is d, this is ridiculous, I just drew a giant c and I called it d, um, this is not a simple domain. Why? Because if I try to say it's simple with respect to x, there has to be a top function and a bottom function. But look what happens here. If I try to go, let's say I fix an x here, and I try to go between the bottom function and the top function, oops, I'm leaving the domain and coming back inside. Right? So it's not simple. Do you see that it's not simple with respect to x? Likewise, it's not simple with respect to y. If I would say, okay, the c's are between, the, the, the y's are between some c and some d, and d for every y, the function is between two values, but again, that's not the case. If I look at this specific y, here's the left function, I go out the right function, but then again, I come back into the domain again. So do you agree that it's not a simple domain, any way you look at it? However, it could be broken up into simple domains, into a finite uh, union of simple domains. So for example, let's break it up into simple domains. So for example, um, let's say up to uh, here, up to here, all of this is a simple domain with respect to x. Do you agree? For every fixed x, there's a top function and a bottom function. Do you agree that this bottom portion of d, which is c, is simple? Now this part, for example, is simple with respect to y. Let's say all the way up to here. So this is simple with respect to y where the, the, le the, the right function is this orange and then the black, and the left function is just the, the other black, right? And then the remaining stuff is again simple with respect to x. So whatever the theorem is going to be, we'll write it next time, uh, it will work for this domain as well because it can be broken up into a finite collection of simple domains. Clear? Good? Everybody? Okay, so that's the notion of a simple domain. And uh, in the next clip, we're going to discuss the theorem of calculating double integrals using iterated integrals on simple domains or finite sums of simple domains coming up next.